Is La Nina dead? Not quite, but watch out. It is going to decrease very, very quickly. So here's the La Nina forecast. December, January, February, La Nina was still strong, but look at March, April, and May. The chance of having La Nina is much, much lower and stays low going into the future. If seeing La Nina go away is a good thing, go ahead and hit that like button for me. The ocean has been changing. The atmosphere has been changing. Slice that ocean on its side. Going down into the depths, we're losing a lot of that cold ocean water as warmer sea surface temperatures and warmer ocean conditions continue to erode this La Nina. So what's going to be left as we take out our La Nina? What happens? Well, we bring in the chance of neutral conditions. No El Nino. No La Nina. That's those gray bars. Look at the probabilities here. Neutral conditions begin to increase. Over 80% likelihood to be in a neutral state as we hit the spring. What about the chance of El Nino, though? As we close the door on La Nina, we open the door, at least a little bit, for El Nino to start to come in. Not likely in March, April, or May, but this summer certainly has those higher chances for El Nino to begin to move in. Put it all together. What's happening here? La Nina, blue bars, decreasing the chance of having La Nina. Neutral, gray bars, we're increasing that chance of having neutral conditions this spring into early summer. And then here comes El Nino. The chances begin to increase. In fact, by late summer into next fall, what's most probable but El Nino. Why is this a big deal? What does this change? Well, let's just look at spring here. This is spring, La Nina, since 1990 in terms of precip. Very dry southwest, pockets of moisture over the plains and back to the east. Compare that to El Nino, look at that difference. Much, much different situation in springs if you have El Nino. Very wet across the southwest and the south, side by side. La Nina Springs, El Nino Springs, look at the big time difference here. Now, I'm not trying to say that all La Ninas are good for everybody or El Ninas are bad for everybody or a combination of anything. It's different for everybody. Go ahead and leave in the comments section what you would prefer, a La Nina pattern or El Nino, knowing what they do for your area. Temperatures, let's look at side by side. Very hot temperatures in springs with La Nina. Colder for the Pacific Northwest and parts of the West and Great Basin. You look at El Nino and we flip those things around. We spread the heat more to the Northern Plains and the Northwest and bring down the cooler temperatures down across the South. So those are two examples of a season where there's big differences between La Nina or El Nino conditions. That's why it's such a big deal. So that's the latest on La Nina. It is going away. Not dead yet, but it is dying. What happens if El Nino kicks in? Great for water resources. In fact, speaking about water resources, we're worried about the Colorado River, Lake Mead, Lake Powell. Check out this video right here, and it will give you the information on where those reservoirs are sitting as of the latest update. Check out weather5280.com. If you're an insider or a pro, you'll get climate information discussions, lengthy ones, about La Nina or El Nino and the regional impact on Denver, Colorado, and the West.